Hi, Kevin. How are you? I haven't been on here in like the last two days, so what's up? Oh, company just got there. Oh, no fun for you then. Maybe you come play with me tomorrow. Hey! Come on in. Oh my god, your dog is so cute. Oh, thank you. Oh He's good with girls, but like kind of weird with guys. Yeah, he's, just, a bit. he's a rescue, so. Ariana Marie is a social media star in the truest sense. She's one of a growing number of independent, live streaming video personalities who can make thousands of dollars in just a few hours, broadcasting mostly unremarkable acts for a captive internet audience. She just happens to do some of it naked. Ariana is a camera girl part of a booming at-home workforce made up of young women and a few men who are simultaneously upending adult entertainment and social media. <laughs> are there parts of the house that you won't put up cameras, like that are kind of off limits for us? No, so? I mean, the house is, I mean, we got it intended for all of this. So pretty much, like they just installed the bottom cameras. Like there's a camera there too. It's mm -hmm. so crazy. I think there's like a total of maybe like eight cameras throughout, or maybe 10 throughout the whole house right now. Um, and that's just a feed that goes 24 seven for the fans to kind of see, kind of like a day in the life of like Ariana Marie and like what goes on in my house. <laughs> and so I got one in the shower too. <laughs> there are countless models streaming live all over the world 24 hours a day. And they all have one woman to thank. I've heard a lot of stuff about the internet, a lot of, you know, yeah, yada, yada, yada about the internet. And I, and I don't care about the internet. This, to me, is like the perfect idea for the internet, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you look around on the internet, there's, there's so much that it, like, as far as broadcasting goes, it's just like TV on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I think what it needs is to have something that's made for the medium. This will replace television as we know it now. In 1996, two years after the first consumer webcam hit the market, a Pennsylvania college student named Jennifer Ringley rigged one of the devices to constantly record candid stills from inside her dorm room. She then uploaded them every 15 minutes to her site, JennyCam.org. Within months, her candid, uncensored live stream had made her a star. For seven years, her life played out for an audience of millions of strangers. But for all of the mainstream hype, Jenny Cam's appeal was decidedly NSFW. She gave her followers unrestricted access to her private life, including intimate moments like masturbation and sex. Despite its success, Ringley took Jenny Cam offline in 2003, following a sex scandal involving another lifecaster's boyfriend. This will replace television because this is really all people want. They just, people are lonely and desperate. They're lonely, desperate, miserable human beings. They want, they're, they're reaching out, they want to see life somewhere else taking place. It's comforting. The following year, Facebook was born, and over the next 10 years, live streaming video would become a cornerstone of mainstream social media sites. Cams is an application that came not from the frontier pushing technology, but from the personal need of a connection. And I, I can't emphasize this enough, that CAMS was simply an expression, an adult expression of Facebook. It really was. And Facebook allowed us to create these faux tribes, these faux friends that pretend to care what you have for dinner, even though they really don't. And you pretend to care what your friend has for dinner, even though you don't. MySpace was my first experience with the internet and getting to know people and having the friends online and all that. I actually stumbled into a cam model's room and felt in love with her instantly. And I was like, I could do this. So I tried it. My first day, I made a quarter of my paycheck that I usually make. And after that, like, I just knew that's where I was supposed to be. When my camera's open, Harley kicks in and Liz is gone.
they fall in love with our personality. That's how we get our regulars. They keep coming back. They want to talk to us every day. We're friends. We make friendships and relationships. Some guys will just log on and they just want, they're in it just for the sexual entertainment and that's, that's all they're interested in. Other guys, and I would say the majority of the guys that I um, entertain, they're more just kind of looking to kick it. It's the one-on-one -on -one connection. That's all it is. It's the man or woman that's at work all day and they want to go home and have that release and talk to that person about their day, about their sexual fantasies, and that's, that's what webcamming is all about. From my data, everything I've ever seen in cams, 80% of it's interactivity the, in the adult. If it's, we're talking about hardcore cams, the final 10% is where there's actually, you know, something sexual that happens. The majority of it's just interaction and talking and uh, people spilling their guts to, on, to each other and it's just like psychotherapy, digital psychotherapy. I think I play the girl next door role the most. So my audience is like those boys that had girl best friends in high school and they're just used to having girls to talk to and they like run their ideas by me or they ask me their opinions. I've had relationships and friendships with these members for five plus years and I, I know everything about them and they really know everything about me. And they've seen me grow and they've seen me change over the years. Literally used to watch the numbers and watch these people consume the amount they would consume and it wasn't anything more than just a internet companionship. When you're talking to people in the business, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that human connection is monetizable. You can make, um, my, my goals are, are thousands a day. In Cami, you can make anywhere from $500 to $5,000 in a day, where if you shoot on porn for a set for 12 hours, you made $1,000 if it's girl, girl. Like, that's just a rough estimate, I think. I mean, of course, I want to put my time into camming, especially because it's not 12 hour days, it's three to four hours. Every time these models log on, they're making money. And while they may not identify as porn stars, many of them do take advantage of the adult industry to boost their visibility. Every model's different, but many shoot traditional hardcore films, tour strip clubs as feature dancers, sell merchandise used in their streams, produce commissioned videos for viewers, accept gifts through Amazon wish lists, and of course, collect tips during their streams in the form of tokens. Can I just read off some of these? Yeah. So, show boobs one minute is 150 tokens. Moaning someone's name is 100. <laughs> Three butt spanks is 50? 50 tokens, yeah. I feel like you should up that. I know. So what I'm doing is I'm just posting my link for MFC so they can just go to it. Hi guys. Everyone has their uh, comfort levels. So if your comfort level is cooking uh, in a bikini on YouTube or your comfort level is doing, you know, a hardcore show, you know, there's still content production to me, bottom line. And they're still both content producers and there's still a consumer that would never consume that but will consume the bikini girl or the girl cooking or the guy cooking or whatever. So to me, it's, it's not porn anymore, man. But the similarities don't end there. Mounting evidence shows that the more we connect through online networks like Facebook, the more isolated we become in real life. Loneliness is a very real thing not only for people frequenting campsites like My Free Cams and Chatterbait, but for the models themselves. Webcamming gives you that one-on-one -on -one connection, like someone comes to my room, hey, did you get that job interview? I've been sick lately and they genuinely want to know how's it going and I will talk about that openly with them because obviously there are some things that are personal that we would prefer to keep personal. A lot of us are cam models because we do have anxiety. That's why, opposed to a strip club, which there's nothing wrong with the strip club, I could never do that. Maybe a guy's gonna touch me. I don't like to be touched or hugged. Yeah. But um, I am a little more open about what's going on. Like, yeah, guys, I have more dental work Monday, and they always check up on me. I had so many messages today about good luck with your, I hope you have fun this weekend, and good luck on Monday. Please let me know what happens. Oh, even us just hanging out last night, they were so supportive of that. They tipped us so we don't get online so we can go have a good time. They really do care about us and we do care about them. Yeah. My biggest fear with camming is that I am enabling myself to be more alone and stay in my house because I actually get that interaction I need already in my house. It is a security blanket, that's exactly how I put it. As long as I have it on, I'm, I feel okay. Have you ever thought about how intimate your relationship is with your computer? 
Not until right now, actually, talking to you. I've just realized that, yeah, like, I probably, it's my best friend right now. It helps me through everything, that's for sure.